Hi folks, this is a Xilinx Kintec 7 FPGA development board. I picked this up from under $300 from AliExpress and you can pick it up from other vendors as well uh, for around the same price. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of the board. Uh, I'll also share some of my findings. Um, I've been working on board support package uh, for this board so that it can be used in Xilinx IP integrator. Uh, so I've tested out a lot of the components um, I'm also looking at doing some, uh, developing some add-on boards, uh, and so I'll, so I'll share some of the uh, things I've learned while I've uh, looked closely at the schematic and, and done some uh, implementation designs on, on this board. Um, and uh, so later at the end, I'll talk a little bit about uh, future content that I'll be producing on this board, um, but let's just jump right into uh, board features for now. Um, this board contains uh, a Xilinx Kintec 7. It's an XC7K325T. It's in a 676 pin package and it's a speed grade two. FPGA uh, itself has plenty of logic resources, DSP blocks, and uh, multi-gigabit transceivers. As you can see, it's a PCI Express board. So it's got a PCI uh, Express X4 interface. It's got two SATA ports. It has two gigabit ethernet ports. Uh, it's got two 10 gigabit SFP plus cages. There's a standard JTAG uh, programming port here. Uh, near the SATA ports over here, there's a 200 uh, megahertz differential system clock. Um, there's one gigabyte of uh, DDR3 SD RAM. One of the features that really attracted me to this board was that it has a, a, an FMC connector. The board has an HDMI connector. Uh, so this is uh, usable for both in and HDMI in and HDMI out. Um, I have only tested out on this and it works perfectly fine. Um, there's an 80 pin board to board connector. This is a 0.8 millimeter pitch. Uh, and then there's uh, another 80 pins of 2.54 millimeter or 0.1 inch uh, header. This is a uh, five banks of 16 pins for another 80 pins of IO. Now, not all of those are connected and um, some, of are, some of them are power pins. Uh, so you're not gonna get 80 pins of IO out of there, but uh, same with this, uh, this connector. Um, but you'll get, you'll get plenty of uh, differential pairs uh, available. Um, there's also an SD card. Um, this is a standard SD card connector. There's a um, 12 volt barrel connector for, for power. Um, and, and a power switch here. Now you can also power it via uh, uh, PCI Express. So if you plug it into a computer uh, and running it uh, via PCI, you do not need, in fact, you cannot power it by the 12 volt connector here. Um, it's got plenty of uh, power control circuitry. I've not had any problems with that. Um, it's got on the back, we'll look at a few other things. Uh, let me make sure I have this lined up in frame. This is a, uh, a USB to serial UART uh, for, for doing diagnostics. Um, and it's got uh, three other uh, clock chips on here. One of them is a 100 megahertz uh, single-ended chip and the other two are um, either 150 or 156.25 uh, megahertz uh, MGT. Uh, they're designed to, um, they're MGT clocks. So they're designed for uh, 10 gigabit ethernet on the SFP cages or the SATA, the 150 megahertz is designed for the SATA connector. Now this board does have a pad for an SI5338 clock generator chip. Uh, so you can get those, they're almost impossible to find right now. Uh, so uh, I didn't put that in there. You would need to populate this chip and then a, a 25 megahertz oscillator here to use that as a programmable clock source. Um, there's also a pad for another differential clock interface chip uh, or oscillator that you could plug in here. Uh, you can either use uh, this pad for the oscillator or the, the uh, SI chip for the clock generator. Now, that's pretty much it from the, from the uh, board standpoint. Seller provides detailed schematics, uh, a spreadsheet with the pin mappings, and some rudimentary documentation. They also provide HDL and uh, bit streams for testing the various board interfaces. Um, I've found the vendor to be really good about answering my questions. I deal with them directly on AliExpress 
and he usually responds in a timely manner. Um, now, my only disappointment with this board is that I would like to have seen uh, 12 volt made available on the pin headers so and, and on the uh, board to board connector. So there's 12 volts available on uh, some of the pins on the FMC connector, but 12 volts is not made uh, available on the board to board connector or on the pin headers. And that would have been nice for expansion boards to make, um, you know, simplify some of the power management options there. Um, with that said, I did test the current delivery capabilities of the 3.3 volt rail, which is available on both of these. Um, and it can source up to uh, 600 milliamps without too much droop on the 3.3 volt rail. So um, I'm, the, the chip that they're using to power the 3.3 volt rail is uh, designed to, to supply, and that is completely separate from the VCC IO, um, the 3.3 volt rail that powers the IO portion of the FPGA chip. The 3.3 volt rail that, that powers the interfaces uh, is designed to uh, handle up to about two amps of output. Uh, I have not pushed it that far, um, but you know, for my needs, I needed to be able to source at least 600 milliamps uh, for some of the boards that I'm looking at playing with, and it certainly was able to do that. So with that, we could easily put in like a boost converter. I'm working on a Raspberry Pi board that requires, and the Raspberry Pi interface requires a five volt interface. So I can use a boost converter to get the five volts up that I need. Now, I am currently working on uh, constraint files and a board interface, uh, Xilinx um, Vivado board, inter uh, board files for this. Um, right now, the board files are, are close to being done. I will post a link in the show notes for um, the GitHub repo where they're currently at. Uh, pretty much everything is done except for the, the connectors, um, PCIe, and SATA. Uh, I've tested uh, Gigabit Ethernet, I've tested HDMI, I've tested DDR. Um, oh, I should also mention there are eight LEDs uh, and two uh, input push buttons here uh, that you can use for input. Now, another interesting feature of this board is that on the front here, there are three LEDs. Let me see if I can get this in frame. One, two, three. And those are connected to the same I.O. that the first three uh, LEDs on here are connected to. Uh, so you can, if you do have this mounted in a computer, you will be able to, uh, uh, you know, display some output on the, on the back side that you can see, uh, you know, to get status information for any of your devices. One of the um, things I'm working on are uh, additional videos for this. So I plan on doing a video on how to uh, create Xilinx board files uh, based off of, you know, um, what's in the schematic, what's in the pin mappings, and uh, basically going through the process of doing that. Uh, the, there's not a whole lot of documentation on that, so hopefully it'll help others who need to uh, generate board files for other FPGA development boards. The other thing I'll be doing is basically as I'm adding, as I go through the um, features of this board, I'll be providing basic, uh, you know, tutorials on how to use some of the components on here. We'll start maybe with a blinky or, you know, a simple binary counter using the LEDs. Um, we'll uh, do a simple, you know, memory test. Uh, maybe a uh, an echo server to test out the F, the uh, Ethernet ports, uh, test pattern generator for HDMI, um, and then we'll go all the way up to bu building up a, a, a microblaze uh, Linux-based system um, that will um, boot you know on that will be initialized on boot up. So uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is that this does have um, a standard. Uh, flash memory. This is 32 kilobyte or 32 megabytes, rather, uh, 256 megabits, um, and this is used to store bit streams and, and any um, firmware that you might need uh, in place for startup. And so, yeah, we'll be going through uh, doing a, a series of tutorials on how to use various features of this board, um, all the way up to to doing a, a, a Linux Microblaze implementation. So yeah, that's that's all coming in the future. If you want to see any of those videos, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, till then, talk to you later.